Hello, the purpose of this video is to explain how to start preparing for our final introduction drawings. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you have the list of the following items that is standard um, on our construction drawings. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that our cover sheet is present and we have the perspective and project titles, abbreviation symbols, vicinity map, design theme, the drawing index, general notes, and the project information. And where would we find this? On our CS sheet. So this would be our sheet number one. Um, next thing is uh, our civil and geotechnical drawings. Obviously, we did not do any of those, uh, but that's the next discipline on your construction drawings. And after that, um, it's your landscape drawings, you know, uh, the design of the shrubbery, the plants, the trees that's going to be on the site plan, um, including the design of any walkways or any trellis. Uh, sometimes fencing is also part of the landscape plan, especially if you have a, a fancy uh, landscape um, where you want to have uh, a, a type of fence that is not typical just to, fen to put a fence. Sometimes it has a design on it and that would go in the landscape plan, okay? Um, and then you have your architectural drawings. And first you have your site plan, okay? Um, and next you would have your floor plans, which is your first and second floor. And sometimes they're on a different sheet, but in this case, I think um, I myself has it on the same sheet. Yours may not have it on the same sheet. You may have it on a different sheet. You may have it on sheet, no, sheet A2, okay? And this would be our um, sheet number two. So this is in sheet number two or that sheet number two. And then you have your elevations. And depending on where you have your elevations, you might need to open up your AutoCAD and look at where you have your elevations, okay? And so your elevations might be on a different sheet, okay? Uh, it depends on where you have it. So you have to look at where you have your elevations, okay? So uh it may be an a2 maybe an a a3 or you may you might have doubled it okay so make sure that you open up your um your sheets and look at your uh preliminary elevations uh where did you where did you put your elevations um um you might have put it on a different sheet or you might have put it on a different file name and then you might need to um, look for it and see which sheet number did you put it. So in this case, um, I put in, I put this in A2. So when you go back, you would say, oh, I put this in A2. Okay. Um, and then you go back and uh, and notice that, hey, my elevation session is in A2, but on the other file, I have A2 as my roof plan. So that means that this is going, this one needs to be changed. Okay. So things like that needs to needs to happen because uh, you might have them open in multiple uh, multiple sheets. Okay, so you have to open up your AutoCAD and and look at this one because my roof plan was supposed to be in A two, but now I'm changing it to A three. Okay, so now make sure that you also change this to A three and this one too. Two, so those things, that's why it's important to um, to make so that means that everything else will, will now have to move. So I'm going to just put this one as A3 dash so that I can just continue. But this is supposed to be A3 and my roof section is also supposed to be in A3. I didn't have it on. A different sheet and then your reflected ceiling plan okay so i know that on one plan or preliminary elevation section uh, i don't have any other sheet there so that's done but on my uh roof sheets my roof sheets are uh or what we're we're doing reflected ceiling plan. Okay, reflected ceiling plan my reflected ceiling plan is on a3 but my a3 is supposed to be my roof plan so this is supposed to be a4 right so I have to change this now and update that to A4. And the tab here is supposed to be now A4. And you can't name this A4 because there's already an A4 existing. So I'm gonna just put a A4 dash just to continue, okay? And go back to my uh, plan reflected. Okay, I'm gonna put an A4, both of these are in A4. Okay, so this would be my sheet number three 
and this will be my sheet number four, and this is my sheet number five. Okay, and then my ceiling details. Did I put my ceiling details on a different sheet? Okay, so looks like my ceiling details are supposed to be here uh, uh, on A5. So I'm going to put in A5 here for my ceiling details. Uh, and then um, I will change to my A-4 and rename that to A5. A-5 and put a dash on it. Okay. So go back here, my zone details are in A-5, and that's my sheet number six, okay? Now my section is part of my elevations, okay? So I'm going to put here, uh, it's on A-2, okay? And I'm not going to put a, a new sheet number here because it's just the same um, sheet number as my sheet number three, so they're together, okay? Um, or you can, you might, you might want to just put that there, but, um, uh, I'll leave that by details. And then my section, my section details, uh, did we put any section details? Uh, if you don't have it, if you didn't put any section details, then, uh, we'll leave it blank. Enlarged plans, we don't have one, but enlarged plans are something like a commercial kitchen. If you have a commercial kitchen, you want to create a, a large plan and show, um, where the dishwasher is going to be, what kind of equipment it is, where the um, burners and all this stuff. So you want to put that a large plan in commercial kitchen. We didn't do that. Uh, you want to also put in a furniture plan and you would have an enlarged plan of your eating area. You're going to lay out the tables. You're going to put distances on it. We didn't do that too. And then you met, you, you will have an ordering counter. You know, we have a cafe and there's a counter we're going to order. You're going to put in um, the measurements uh, on the clearance spaces. There's a sink involved in the counter. You have to put that too. So we don't have that on any sheet. So we're going to leave that blank. But that's something that that uh, commercial, um, I mean, a cafe would would have. And then enlarged plan of the stairs. Uh, we didn't do that. Um, but that's something that uh, usually typically also have uh, is present. Um, and some of these things. Uh, I plan to discuss at the end if we have time. Um, but uh, as you know, there's a lot of things that you're you you are going to draw, and you have been drawing them a lot of things, and sometimes um, we don't have enough time to do that. Okay, so we're gonna just consider this as advanced things. But yeah, a large plan of the stairs would include the details of the railing, the thread, and the risers. Okay. So we, we don't have that on any sheet, so we're going to leave that blank. And then also, you might have room interior elevations. Uh, typically, when you have a, um, a design for a wall that is uh, with a wainscoting or with paneling, or we have a special printed wall with a wallpaper, you want to you wanna do a, a interior elevations on, on that one. Okay, and we didn't do that, so we're going to leave that blank. Kitchen cabinets too important thing. The detail, the panel details. You might put that on a different sheet, and we don't have that, so we're gonna put that there. Wall details. I think wall details. We do have like a wall detail uh, as part of uh, uh, our details on on the light fixture. I mean on the ceiling details. So if you if you have a separate detail on that one, then you have to put that here. Um, we. We have wall details on the structural, uh, but we didn't actually do any wall details on this one. It, it was very difficult to um, go through the wall details without um, really knowing the design of uh, of the wall. But um, towards the end, we will do some uh, wall uh, differentiation, and that would actually be a wall detail. And so. Um, I don't think we have enough time again to do that, but we will do um, a wall uh, symbol legend on our floor plan. And um, uh, I don't know if we have time to do that, but we're gonna discuss that later on. Uh, and then you have the site details. So if you have site details, you know, uh, like special curbs or uh, the detail on how to put in your um, bicycle rack, 
uh, any um, tire stops and so all that stuff. That's going to go into site details. We don't have that. Okay. Uh, we do have ADA details. Okay. So ADA details, uh, I believe it's part of the sheet A5, right? But because we already have A5 for our uh for our ceiling details, therefore A5 will we'll, we'll call that uh, A6 now. So A6, and then this one, we're gonna rename this to A-6. Oops, I have an A-6 already, so A-6 dash, okay. So going back here, we have that on A-6, and that will be my seventh sheet here, seventh sheet. And then we have our door schedule, okay, and our door schedule is supposed to be here, and that's going to be now A-7. A-7. And then we're going to rename this A-7. A7 dash. Okay, so going back to my document, I know I have this in A dash 7, and the details are also in A dash 7. Sometimes, if there's a lot of doors, you might need a different sheet on that one. So, in my, in my drawing, again, your drawings and my drawings are going to be different. This is going to be my sheet, eighth sheet. And door schedule, uh, on the window schedule, I put it on um, A. Eight. Okay, and so this one will now be called A8. A8. Okay, uh, and then, uh, oops, uh, that, that will be my night sheet, and the details for that one is also on that sheet, and that's night sheet. And then you have your finished schedule, which we um put it on a9 um so double check yours if you have a9 or you have a10 and that'll be my 10th sheet okay uh and so that's that's the architectural plan uh and um we have to look at our structural next uh so you're going to fill that up uh however number of sheets you have and then after that one uh you're going to have your mechanicals we didn't do mechanicals uh then the equipment drawings um, for any boilers or anything like that. Typically, mechanical equipment are just, are done by the same person, so this might be part of the M sheets. Okay, so you won't, you might not see EQ sheets, but if there are special equipment, uh, boilers or any, uh, if you if you are um, doing a project that involves you know pressing olive oils, and you would have this big. Uh, um, containers uh, to store the oil and any special equipment and you would have a consultant uh, on those equipment and they would they would have to call their sheets and EQ sheets. Then you have your plumbing. Uh, somebody asked me about if we're going to do some plumbing drawings and we are not going to do some plumbing drawings. Um, I thought that I would have time to explain how to do these but um, I, I don't think we're going to have time to do that but they're called EQ sheets. Then you have your fire protection, which includes your sprinklers, and that would be your F sheets. Then you would have your electrical sheets, which includes your communication um, wires too. Again, for big or large uh, drawings, um, electrical and communications go together. Uh, communications, uh, sometimes there's really very, very low current on the arm, but uh, it does fall into electrical, so that would be your E sheets. And then the very last part of your uh, construction drawings, it will be interior design drawings. So if there's any special interior uh, that needs to be there, um, and special furniture, special special dividers, uh, special ceilings, the interior designer would have to include that on the um, construction drawings. And we put that at the very end, okay? So finish this up and include your structural so you would know how many sheets you have so far. Obviously, we don't have these, so we're not going to count them. We didn't do some of them over here, so we don't have any sheets on them. But for architectural, on in my case, I have 10 sheets. For structural, I think I have five or something. But um, yeah, 
depends on what you have. So go ahead and fill this up. Uh, and then we're going to continue uh, with what you're supposed to do next after you have done all the sheets. So you can go ahead and you can highlight this table and start a Google Doc and then simply right click and copy that. And then you simply go to your uh, Google Drive and um, go to your My Drive. Uh, I did it on my ED320. And then you simply start a new Google Doc and then create a new Google Doc for yourself. And I'm not going to ask for this, but you can simply copy and paste that and then fill this up on your own. Or you can put this and do it by paper just so that you can have a visual and tactile thing to consider um, for your for your uh, list. Okay, so that's what you need to do. And then we're going to continue and do the next step, which is making sure that you've adjusted your sheet number. We did the same thing, but um, make sure that you do that. Uh, and uh, in a few in, in a few seconds, I'll show you how that should look like uh, on your sheet. Okay. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do after we have listed down all of our sheet numbers and sheet uh, contents, and it turns out that I uh, has um, I have a total of fourteen sheets total, and um, including the structural, I don't have any of these sheets. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to adjust your uh, sheet numbering uh, to reflect your total number of sheets minus 14 yours might be different so let's go to our sheet um, one in our sheet one uh, we have one out of what so we're going to double click this and change that to 14 okay click ok and uh, we're supposed to change all of this so a1 is supposed to be 2 out of 14 over here uh, um, and then you're going to have your a2 and a2 is going to be 3 out of 14 and then you're going to have your a3 and a3 is going to be 4 out of 14 okay and so forth and so on so that's what you're going to do for your um, next um, step is to change and adjust your sheet numbering in total sheets okay the uh, next stage or step uh, onto your finalizing your uh, submission would be to make sure that um, walls are differentiated. Okay, and when we say differentiated, we mean that these walls that we see on the floor plan, they're not supposed to be all the same because they're not. This wall here is supposed to be a CMU wall, but this wall here is a gypboard wall and this wall here is probably gypboard inside and stucco outside so we do have to differentiate that and we sort of did that on our um, structural plan so let's pull that up okay let's open up uh, our structural plan on this project I believe structure folder here and if we open up our site plan, I mean a floor plan, you should see in our S1 that we do have a differentiation. And this one is our typical six inch CMU wall. Okay, and then over here we have our typical exterior wall. So just like we did on the structural plan, we will have to do the same thing for our architectural plan. Okay, so we're going to have to remove this hatch and put in some different uh, wall hatches to take note of what wall is switch, okay? Okay, so um, we just uh, adjusted our walls and you can see now that they're not all gray. And uh, this has a different hatch, which indicates that this is a different wall. This one also has a different hatch, which is also a different wall. And for our interior wall, like on the bathrooms, we also have a hatch here that's different, okay? from the exterior wall. So that's what we have so far. Uh, and what we're going to do next is we're going to make sure that we know what kind of wall by adding the uh, a wall legend here. And you can do that by going to the uh, extra file of where your floor plan is. So here's our floor plan and we have indicated our wall and we copy that wall down here. Okay, so there are three types of wall. And what we're going to do on our this floor plan here is we're going to simply uh, 
make a copy of this um, uh, xref window so we're going to just make some sort of copy and we're going to pull that somewhere down here and then we're going to shrink that and we're going to pull that down here so until we can see the um wall legend we just created um, okay, so let's see again here is our oh no that's not that one here is our file uh, let's go ahead and save this it's below our floor plan so once it's saved we go back here and then we reload and we enter yes and let's just move this up here so we can see it it's not showing up i don't know why it's not showing up Unlock that extents and oh it's an extra within an extra so what we're going to do is uh, erase this and go to our model space and it's it's actually here that I needed to stretch that there you go now we can see it we can see it before so over here on our a1 feet i'm simply going to uh, expand that you should see it now here okay so i'm going to retract that a little bit and then make a copy of this view so we're going to do a copy and we're just going to create a copy here and click this and then shrink that and then expand that below until we see our three different wall types okay there it is and i'll shrink this some more further and i may need to adjust this later but okay i will turn off this um viewport window and here's our three different wall types um i may want to adjust this again I'm going to move this here. Okay. And then I'll grab um, my 1 8 copy. I'll just grab this, but I'm going to adjust this to 1 8. Okay. And then make sure I change the property on that one and make that. Oh, sorry, the 1 8. Very good. So. Uh, that's too thick for me. I didn't realize it was just that thick. So I'll click that, change that to maybe green one, and then change 10 5. Yep, yeah, it's green. And then simply call this out that this is going to be a CMU wall. And I have to define that this is a 6 inch CMU wall with. A two by four a two by four studs on interior side. Okay. And then well, I needed two lines, so let me just copy this. And then add my second line uh, with an R16 wall insulation. R16 wall insulation. I'm sorry. I hit a lot of my wall insulation and uh, three quarter inch and three quarter, five eighths, five eight inch thick chipboard 
There you go. So that's my first wall. And I'm going to put on my other wall. So I think I'm going to have another two lines there. So I'm going to just bring this down here. Um, and I'm going to have this one. This one is a two by six stud exterior wall with foam core insulation on exterior side. Okay. Uh, two by six static exterior wall with foam core insulation exterior side and um uh, um stucco finish. Okay, and I'm gonna have a third third line here. I'm going to do ins in, uh, insertion to insertion, and then on interior side. I have. With R20 uh, fiberglass insulation. Let's just call it uh, matte insulation with um, chipboard 5 8 inch thick chipboard interior there you go okay and then for my last wall this one here so I'm gonna pull this down and pull it down here and I'm gonna say this is actually only a two by four stud Two by four stud wall with five eight inch thick chipboard each side. So that means both sides are gonna have chipboard. And I don't need this, but I need to bring this down here. So I'm gonna just double click that. Okay, oh yeah. Double click and make sure it's locked, it is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just save this and then go to my base rev four and this one, I'm going to just do a trial and error, and I'm going to simply just move it a little bit and move this by. Save that. And then go check if when I reload, is it on the right spot? A little bit more, probably. Oh, oh, oh. My hat's disappeared. Oh, there we go. Check a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more. So we'll go back here and move that away a little bit. Take that, go back here and do another reload on my A1 sheet. Click OK, go to A1. There you go. So that's going to be my um, um, wall legend. And all I'm going to do is turn off my viewport. And that's how you differentiate the wall. So you can check off the number three on our list. Make sure your walls are differentiated. Okay. Okay, after you have uh, dif differentiated your wall by putting diff different hatches um, on your wall and putting a legend on your uh, floor plan, you will now make sure that the section cuts, interior elevations, or any details are correctly called out. So if you go back to our floor plan, um, this line here is a section cut and it's supposed to point to our sheet number, I believe, A2. 
right? Sheet A2. And the short section is called section A, and the detail number or the drawing number is number five. So we need to make sure that this one is pointing to that sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a tag here at the end. We're going to copy it from one of our tags here. So we're simply going to select this and do a right click clipboard copy. Go back to our A1 sheet and then simply right click clipboard and paste. Okay. And then we are going to move this corner from here. We're going to put it here. And we're going to put this. I'm going to cut this. I want to. I want to cut this and move this from here to there. And this one is sheet our drawing number five, and it's supposed to be pointing at A two. Okay. The other section, the long one, is section B. Okay. And so that one is this uh, line here. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy this. We're going to copy it from the quadrant here to the endpoint here. And we're going to copy also this one. Because this is your arrow pointer. I'm going to copy that from there. I'm going to put that here. And then we're going to rotate this from this point. Okay. Pointing now to this direction. Uh, is that is that how we want, or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. So let's look at it again. We're looking at the section, yeah. So it's pointing on the other way around, um, other side. So we're having to do a. So we're gonna mirror this one. And answer yes. There you go. And this one is drawing what number? Number six. So we're going to change this to number six. And that's making sure that our sections are. Oh, I erase this one. I'll bring that back. And that actually is number five. Okay, so now our sections are called out. If you have any details, you're going to call that out. Uh, or make sure that it's called out correctly on the correct sheet. Uh, and that's your next step uh, on uh, finalizing your plans. Okay? Okay, so once you have made sure that all the section cuts are properly called out, there's any details that you called out it correctly and pointed to the correct sheet the next thing in our list would be making sure that the site plan has uh the ada symbols on the parking ada sign location north arrow and other stuff so let's go to our site plan and our site plan is on the same sheet as our floor plan a1 uh, some of you might have it on a different sheet and that's fine uh, i do have an ada symbol on the parking lot but i don't have something that points that there is supposed to be an ada sign in front of this ada parking so what we're going to do is simply we're going to use um, a leader and point uh, here at the middle of the parking and bring it out here and we're going to put in note uh, one click OK and, and then just, let's just add a note here on the bottom uh, I'll try to simply copy it from uh, somewhere over here so I'm going to simply select this control C or right click copy go back to my A1 Control V, there you go, and then double click and edit the edit the contents, and then ADA uh, parking sign, and then I'm gonna put in parentheses C uh, A six. A-6, because that's where our ADA details are for details. Okay. And this would be site notes. Site notes. Okay. And move it under. You can directly put the note um, and put here the words, uh, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's change that to a spline. I like, I like this one better. Okay. And then the north arrow is not here, so uh, let's go to our model space and oop, go to our model space and see uh, if we have any north arrow on our site plan. Okay. We do. It's over here. Okay. So 
So we can simply move that, move that closer, but this is part of the um this is part of an extra file. So I wanna make I wanna do it on my finish sheet. So let's turn on again our viewport so I can see where to drag the box. There you go, and I'll turn that off later. And then my north arrow points this way, so I'm gonna just do a line from from that point to perpendicular to this wall. Okay. And um, I'm going to actually now return this back to the extent that I want it to be. And there's my north arrow. And I can make it as fancy as I want again, uh, or I can just do um my own design. Okay, and then do a circle. And then put here the letter N. So I'll just copy, just copy this and put that there. And put in north. Okay. And then we're going to just rotate this so it's at the same angle as the line. And then move that there. And then move this whole thing closer. Uh, yeah, I think that's this is fine. The location is fine there. And then turn off my viewport. And then look at it again. Okay, so I have my ADA symbols. Okay, I have my north, I mean, my ADA sign. I have my north arrow. Uh, if I have any bicycles, I have to put that in. I'm going to show that to you right now. Uh, but yeah, that's all of your site elements is there. And that's uh, your next step here for number five. Okay. All right, so after you have made sure that you have all the site elements present, the north arrows, ADA symbols, and where the location of your ADA sign is, the next thing you're going to do is make sure that all your information are there. The room info, room names, room numbers, room areas, you have your occupant load and occupant factor. You have your dimensions for all the walls and partitions. Uh, you have consistent uh, heights and fonts for your drawing titles and drawing numbers. These are all superficial stuff, but they're important uh, because you are uh, doing something for a um, professional firm. So it must the output must be professional. And the last thing you're going to do is make sure that your sheet index is correct. So you're going to have to revisit your sheet index and make sure that all of this is listed correctly, that you have 14 sheets listed here. Um, and uh, you have removed your preliminary and changed it to for construction. So. Uh, when we say this one, we have preliminary here, uh, and uh, we don't want this anymore, so we're going to need to remove this, okay? And you have to remove that for all your sheets, okay? And uh, you're going to actually change it for construction. So you might need to um, put that somewhere outside or inside. So I've seen it. Some people have done it and added it here. Some people have added it outside the border. Anywhere you want it, typically uh, I want to put it here, but when you have a revision, that's going to be a problem. Okay, some people have put it here, okay, for construction uh, and something where you everybody can see it. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's do um, let's copy this. And then let's just put for construction. And we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to move that where we need to. And we don't want to put it in the middle because this is for the, this is a revision box. I'm going to have another video on that one for construction. And I typically also put in a um, a box around this word for construction so everybody knows that it's for construction 
uh, and I simply once I had it fixed I simply um, select this control C and go to my other sheets and put in the same spot okay uh, let's do this let us actually put a line here Mm, yeah, let's put a. Is it important? Uh, yeah, let's just do this. I'm going to put a line here and then select the whole thing, including the line in Control C, or right click uh, clipboard copy. Okay, so it's in memory now. I can delete this line here, go to my other sheet do a control v or control paste paste it anywhere and then move this whole thing and touch this endpoint to put it there so there you're exactly on the uh, exact location go to my next sheet uh, erase my preliminary you do a control v put it anywhere and then move it into place so you're going to do this for all the sheets removing the preliminary and make sure you change it to for construction because this is now final Okay, so that's what you're going to do uh, for your last portion over here. And you are done, and you are now going to uh, make your PDF file. Okay? Okay, so once you have removed your preliminary um, tag and put in for construction, the last step will be to basically make your PDF page. Okay, so you can print uh, your sheets one by one using the um, file and um, print and print this as a, a, a PDF uh, one by one here PDF option right you're going to create a PDF you can do that one by one if you want to print all of them at the same time um, you want to open your sheets here uh, so a1 a3 my a2 is over here so here I'm going to put in uh, and rename this a2 a dash two. Uh, you you may want to also let me save that. You may also want to open your uh, structural uh, sheets at the same time. So uh, the structural sheets, this one, and I believe I have this uh, here. Okay, so I have my S one, S zero, and my notes and everything. So I. Now you want to, one before you publish, you want to get rid of extra layout. So I'm going to just click here and I'm going to delete this extra layout sheet. Okay. Uh, also on my preliminary, I don't want any of these extra layouts here. Okay. So, um, or I can, I can actually not select this. Uh, so let's just do it that way. Uh, I'm not going to delete that. I'm just going to, um, print okay so uh, we are going to use uh, AutoCAD's publish tool and for AutoCAD's publish tool it's just printing PDFs as a as a batch so we're going to go to ACAD here go to publish um, and then a dialog box will appear here and it will uh, load all of the layouts open in your file so I don't want to print my model so I, I can simply select right click and then remove I want to print my CS, my A2, right? So on my A2, I want to print that, but I don't want to print any of these. So I can uh, press my control and select all of these and right click and then remove it. And then I don't want to print this one too. So right click here and remove. Okay. So once I have that, uh, I will want to tell it where to store my publications. So I'll just click this and just pull this down to my desktop. I just want to print my desktop right away. So select. Okay, so it's going to print on my desktop. Um, I'm going to uh, set print everything to here. Uh, and I'm going to publish to a PDF. Select here, publish to PDF. I can save this list for future uh, printing, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to print it once. Uh, do I include a plot st stamp? No. Okay. Do I want to publish in the background? Sure. Or I can uncheck that. 
But if I publish in the background, I, I don't know what's going on. So I'll just uncheck this. And then precision, okay, you can change that, but I'll just click none here. And then I think I believe that's it. And all I'm going to do, let's see publish options here. Uh, vector quality. Okay, that's fine. Everything's fine here. And then once I have that, I have my, uh, I can also change the order or I can actually rename this, I believe. Uh, yeah, rename feet. So I can remove all of this and just put in CS. So I can do that. Next thing here, I'll just rename. Uh, okay, now that's not really important uh, because you're you're going to uh, combine them, um, the sheets anyway. Uh, so once we have that, click publish, uh, and desktop here. Uh, they want to uh, not because I said. Um, that I, want, I don't want to do it on the background. Uh, I will simply click on, you know, let me just cancel. And I want to change the publish option so that um, I am in charge of where to put it. And I will actually put it on my Google Drive EDT 320 file. And I will actually create a new folder here. And I'm gonna call it publish, just so that I'm aware of where I'm putting it. So click publish, click select, and then there it is. Okay, and I click okay, and then I go publish. And then um, this, the first sheet is CS, so I simply select. Uh, do you want to save the current list? Uh, no. Okay, now because I didn't uh, say publish it in the background, uh, you will see this box, but if you say that you want to publish it in the background, you won't see this progress bar. Okay, so you can see it's printing. Uh, well, why do I append it 15? So maybe um, I had a mistake, but anyway, let's now look at my um, publish folder on my EDT 320 uh, publish, uh, and I double click that. And I have all my sheets here. Okay, so as you can see here, I, I renamed my first sheet, so um, it it just listed them correctly here. But if you don't have it renamed, you can just rename it now here, and just put in a dash three. Enter. Now a two is here, so I can actually move a two here. There you go, and then rename this to a two. So I can go from CS to A1 to A2 to A3, okay, and then rename all of this accordingly until I finish with my sheets, okay. Uh, but it shows me as 15. I, I thought I only counted for 14, so I have to find where I made a mistake. So O1, O2. Uh, I think I printed the last layout. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So for, oh, this one here, what is this? Yeah, this one. So I don't want this. So I'm going to just right click and delete it. Okay, now we have, uh, now we're supposed to have 15, I mean 14. Right. Oh, I still have 15. Hmm. Oh, this one here. I thought I deleted this. Let's go back here and. Rename A4, A-4, A-5, A6, A7, A8, A9. Uh, and then I have my, my finished seat. Oh, I'm missing one sheet. Yeah, my finished seat is not here. So because I didn't actually create one. Uh, so that's going to be 10, A10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Ah, okay, so I do, I do have 15. So um, now I have to go back to my list and make sure that I have it correct. I also have to 
go back to my uh, drawing index and make sure it's correct. Okay, so make sure that everything is correct because uh, you're going to submit this for finals. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, if you don't have this uh, Acrobat Pro, you can print it one by one and then you can use uh, the online service of Acrobat. The link is I provided the link here, but uh, yeah, we can also use AutoCAD public tool to do the uh, printing into one file. And I, I did show you how to do that. And I have that on one file under my public folder uh, and it's over here, right? Okay, and then you can reorder them as you see fit. And this is actually what you are going to. Oh, I don't want this. This is actually what you're going to turn in for your finals, okay? So make sure you follow all this instruction here uh, and at the very end, produce only one file, okay? Only one file uh, and you have um, your architectural and structural uh, in it, okay? Uh, so let's just make sure that I add that. Um, include your CS, CS cover sheet, CS, and then your architectural files, your A sheets, and then your structural sheets. And that's really all that we had done for this uh, class because we didn't have to take up electrical plumbing and mechanical okay so basically that's it uh, and uh, verify how many sheets you have uh, on your pdf okay i'm missing one here i didn't include my um finished schedule so that's going to be sheet a10 and then so i have my cover sheet my 10 sheets and my four sheets so that's actually going to be 16 sheets total all right so yeah, that's it. And you are done and ready to be uh, done with this class for our final submission. All right.